Hello, this is Mr. Stansberg. I'm going to take you through some of the problems on the 3D assignment. First one's number one, the graph of y equals negative x cubed plus 7x squared minus 3x minus 12 is shown over here. Use technology to find the x-intercepts and the coordinates and nature of the turning points. So, bust out the TI-84 or 83 or 82, whichever, whatever you've got here. Um, we're going to go into the y equals so that we can enter in our equation. So we're going to skip, it's already got the y equals right there, so we're just going to do negative, different than subtract. It starts off with a negative, it's always the negative sign here. And then we've got x to the third, <clears throat> and then plus 7x squared, minus 3x, minus 12. And then we should go to graph and hopefully it will show up nicely in our window. We'll take a look here. It is thinking, oh, there it goes. So it's a little bit, we'd like to go see a little bit farther down and farther up. So I'm just gonna change my window. We want the Y to be, to go down far, farther. So the Y minimum here, I'm gonna do maybe, just to make sure we'll do negative 20. And then the max, oops, the y maximum. Let's see if I can get down there again. There we go. Let's put that to 20 and see if that's enough to see both parts. And then we have to graph. And then we'll see what it looks like now. Okay, and I realize that sometimes it's hard to get the, um, sometimes the buttons don't show up when I'm recording for some reason so uh, I'm just gonna change it to this view here and I can make it bigger so let's do this one here I still can't quite see the top so let's just change our window one more time let's change our Y max to 30 I think that should get it, get it to be high enough all right 30 and then graph okay and here's our graph rolling here so now it's the same as that over there and it's asking us to find the x-intercepts so to find the x-intercepts we're going to do second trace which is calculate and the x-intercepts are when the uh, y values are zero so we're going to actually just find the zeros so we'll do that and now it's going to say left bound and here it is so what we want to do is we want to move this cursor over until it's to the left before it crosses through and then we'll, and then we should be able to figure it out from there okay finally got it to work here so it is currently to the left before it crosses through so I'm going to push enter and then it says right bound so now I'm going to move it until it definitely has crossed through push enter again enter one more time and it's going to find where it crosses so it's at negative 1.0 Let's see, it doesn't say what to round it to, so I'm going to go 1.05. So 1.05, negative 1.05 is one of them. And then we can do the same thing. Second, trace, calculate the zeros. And then now I want to get over here before it crosses through the x axis, which it really at any point past this it should be fine so I'll push enter and then I just got to scroll over until it gets past where it uh, intersects again this calculator is moving kind of slow today sorry so push enter again and it's now going to check between these two lines here give it a guess sure and then it's going to tell us it's at 1.84 Okay, and then we'll do it one last time for this one over here. So second trace, which is calculate. We're gonna find the zero, so we push number two. And then we just move that over. We gotta get it over closer to here. Again, actually we can leave it right here. Push enter and then move it over as long as it works. And by works meaning as long as this is the only spot where it it crosses through it's going to check what it does is check to see is checks to see when the sign changes from positive to negative or negative to positive so I'll push enter again it's going to check and see if there's any sign changes in that range and there it is at 6.20 okay
find the coordinates and the nature of the turning points. So the turning points are here and here, right? So we would do second trace, which is calculate again. Well, first one we'll find is the minimum, so that's three. All right, and then we gotta scroll it all the way back over till we get to this here. Okay, so I've got it over here. You can usually just press and hold your button and it will, sometimes it works on here, sometimes it doesn't, but press and hold the button and it will just kind of keep moving faster. So, um, oops, I forgot to push enter. So, over here, come on, you can do it. You can make it over there. It's just really going slow. Okay, so push enter for left bound and I'm gonna press and hold until we know for sure we're past. We're definitely past the minimum, press enter, and then enter one more time for guess, and we get that our minimum is 0.225 and negative 12 point, let's do 0.23 and negative 12.33. Um, 0 0.23, negative 12 point, I think it was 33, is that right? Yep. And that is our local minimum. Right, so that's this point right here, and then we can also find this max, this local max right here, which will be at different points. So we do second trace, we're going to find the maximum, which is number four, and really we can start right here because it's not going to get any higher than that. So we push enter, and then so that's our left bound, and then we're going to press and hold until it gets past the top there and is definitely coming back down. So it's definitely past the top, so we can just stop right there, push enter, that's right bound. It's gonna look for the highest Y value in this range and it's at 4.44, 25.15. was it, 4.4? I can't remember either one of the numbers now. 4.44 and 25.15. 25.15 and that's our local max okay okay moving on to the next one for each of the functions given use technology to answer the following okay okay so we're gonna find all these things for each of these two functions here okay using technology so we're just gonna get back into our graphing calculator here we're gonna go into the y equals I'm going to clear out our old function and enter in this new function. So I'm just going to do 0.5 for our 1 half, 0.5x, and then parentheses x minus 4, and then more parentheses, and then we got an x plus 3. Okay, and then we graph that thing, and ours, our scale is off a little bit because we changed it in the last problem. So let's just see how well it works for this one. So it doesn't look like we needed to change the scale at all. So what I'm gonna do, just to kind of get it back to a nice spot here, I'm gonna do zoom, and I'm gonna do zoom standard. So when it gets to this, I'm gonna just push number six, and then what it does is it gets it back to be a 10 by 10 on the X's and the Y's. Okay, so that's enough for the max. And it looks like it's just passed on the minimum, but that's okay. We can still make it work. Okay, so move it over here so we can read our directions. Okay, find the axes intercept. So X's and the Y. Finding the asymptotes, domain and range, and then sketch the function showing its key features. All right. Okay, so here's what the graph looks like. So finding the axes intercepts here. So we'll do second race, and we're going to find first start off finding the zeros. All right, and we're going to move this thing over until we're before to the left before it crosses through the x axis. Push enter, and then scroll over until after it has moved through, crossed through the x axis, which it has there. And enter one more time, and we get negative three. So, for the X, let's see. Uh oh. Okay, there we go. So, X are going to be, X intercepts are at negative 3, 
and there it looked like there was a couple more. There's definitely one there at zero. And then we could really probably just count on this because this is crossing right through the nice spot. So it's at one, two, three, and four. So zero, negative three, zero, and four. And then the y-intercept was also at zero because it crosses through right here. Okay. Just find the coordinates and nature of any turning points. So that's going to be this maximum and this minimum here. So let's, we should probably should calculate that. So we're going to find the first one was a maximum, I believe. Yep. And let's see, we're already to the left of the maximum, so we push enter, and then we scroll over until we get to the right of the maximum, which that will work just fine. Push enter for the little right bound, and then enter again for guess, and here's our maximum, negative 1.69. You know, we're gonna sketch this graph, so let's do just one decimal. So we'll do negative 1.7 and 6.3. Um, negative 1.7. And 6.3 is a local max. All right, and then we could do second calculate, and we're going to find the now the minimum. All right, so we scroll over. Really, we could start it at any point here. And we don't actually have to be able to see the minimum. We just have to know roughly where it's at, which we do. So this should be work. This should work just fine. Push enter a couple more times here, and it tells us we're at 2.4 and negative 10.4. So we got 2.4, negative 10.4, and that's a local minimum, right? Because that's the lowest it is on that point. Find any asymptotes. There are not any asymptotes to be seen here. Uh, domain and range. So domain for this thing here is going to be all real numbers. So domain is all real numbers. And then the range, if you look, it goes forever and ever up, forever and ever down. So that is also going to be all real numbers. Sketch the function showing its key features. So look, now we have all these nice little points here. We got negative 3, 0, and 4. Four for our intercepts and our y-intercept is also at zero and then we've got our negative 1.7 and 6.3 so we'll call that about right there as long as we're in the neighborhood and then 2.4 and negative 10.4 so we'll call that about right there and now we're just going to sketch this graph all right it's going to come down here and come back up and go through there Roughly, that's close enough. This should hopefully be a little bit nicer, but it will work just fine. Okay, um, E, do the same exact process. Just put this into our y equals, clear out anything else that we have. We'll do square root of nine minus x squared. And then we will graph it and see what we get. And there it is. Interesting looking. Looks like a, almost like a part of a circle or part of an oval. Um, anyway, that's what we've got. So, so let's see. We're gonna find our x-intercepts. Let's. I don't know if it's even gonna cross right there. That's gonna be a little trickier to find. Um, but you know, let's let's try. It. Let's see what happens. So, second calculate. Let's see if it will give us. See if it actually crosses through at that point. Doesn't look like it does, but that doesn't always necessarily mean that it isn't going to. So we'll hold that thing down here. Let's see. I'm not, let's try this. I honestly haven't even tried this before. See if this even works. Let me go up to there. Enter. And enter one more time. See if it gives us an error. Or if it actually does something for us. Oops, calculation are not detecting a sign change, so it does not appear initially on that that it's going to be, oops, that it's going to work, but we know that if we plug in 3 squared, 9 minus 3 squared is, well, negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0, squared is 0 is 0, so 
we actually know that it is going to actually hit right there at 3, negative 3, and positive 3 will also work. Let's just see if there's a better way we can do this on our, on our uh, calculator here. So it didn't give us for x-intercept, so maybe we do, let's see what trace does for us. So if you'll look here, our y value is still working, except for now at negative 3.03, it doesn't work. So here's another like little trick that we can do. We'll do second trace, and we're going to put in a value. So we're just going to do 1, and if we put in x equals negative 3, we actually get that y equals 0. So that validates that negative 3 is at 0. And then also if we put in positive 3, it will also equal 0. And then it's kind of nice because this will basically is you can come up with any point you want. If I put in zero, it will tell us that we're at positive three. So look, there's also another point, and that's going to end up being our um, our y intercept as well. So x intercepts negative three and three, y intercept at three. Um, asymptotes, not really seeing any asymptotes on there. Uh, oh, turning points. So the max is, and that's an actual like global maximum because it doesn't get any higher than that anywhere on this graph. So the maximum is going to be at 0, 3, right, right here. So it looks roughly like that. Okay, and then domain and range. Domain is going to be anywhere from negative 3 to 3, right? So we'll just put an x in the middle. x is going to have to be greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to 3 so because it's between. Okay, and then range, uh, y is going to be from 0 up to 3, right? So we will do, instead of doing a y there, let's do 0 to 3, put y in the middle y is going to be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 3. Okay, and we already sketched our function showing its key features. Good? All right. Got one more to take a look at for 4, just to make sure that we're doing okay. So let's plug this one in here. And we are going to go back into the y equals, clear out what we have. And now we want to put this whole thing in a fraction, so um, here's what we can do to put the whole thing into a fraction. So you can actually go into math on this and then go over to frac for fraction. Okay. This one again is acting a little slow. And we got n over d. So we can do that except for we want to be in the y equals part. So math. Let's see if we can get this to work. There we go. So then now we can do 3x minus 9. Okay, and so in the bottom, we got to get x squared minus x minus 2. And then we're going to do zoom standard just to make sure that we've got a nice starting point here and that is what our graph looks like okay so with that come up with all this important info here okay so find the axis intercept so it does not appear there's an x-axis x-intercept over there but there is one here and there could be one later on up there so let's see what we can find so we'll do second trace which is calculate and we want to find the zeros Let's see, feeling pretty good that it's not there, but there is one. It looks like there's one here, so we'll do enter there. And just look at the y value, it's still negative, and now it's positive, so we know we've crossed over. So we get one x-intercept at three. And then let's see, let's see if it crosses back over down there. I don't think it does, but there's one way to check. Second, uh, calculate, and we're looking for zeros, and we'll just start here, and then we're just going to move over, and we're, the big thing we're looking for is to see if the Y ends up going down into the...